So it's Professor Shoemaker here, and what we're going to talk about are using conditional functions. I'm working inside the O5 Analyzing Data uh, list of data worksheet. You can work along with me. In this worksheet, there's also a finished version of this uh, with all the formulas complete, so you can refer to that. Um, I suggest working along with me and just pausing the video. Now here we have a table of uh, work orders. So for each work order, it's uh, like for maintenance in a factory, they'll send Balak out, this was the date, the estimated hours that the manager thought it would take, and the actual hours. So here the manager thought it would take four, uh, the actual hours um, are four here, the manager thought it, it would uh, estimated four hours to do the job, it took ten and so on. And there's a set of people. This list happens to be sorted by name, but that's not really important. It just brings the names together. So we have Davis Day, Dobson, here's an Elkhorn, and so on. This table has range names over the columns. So uh, here's the person column, and you know here's the actual hours column, and, and we have names on them all. That'll just make it easier for us to type our formulas. So let's come up here. The first couple of formulas we're going to look at are what are called unconditional functions. Um, you're familiar with the count function by now, so count actual hours, um, and it's going to sum up uh, uh, or count up the number of records or number of rows that have a number in them, and that's 36. And I'm going to verify that by selecting the range myself. And notice down here at the bottom of the of the uh, Excel page it says count of 36 average 14 and so on so I just eyeballed it and checked what I did we'll do the same thing for the people column now if I use the count function here of person uh, I'm going to get a zero because the count function only counts cells that have numbers and none of these cells over here in the person column have numbers they all have text so I'm going to put in a for alpha uh, and I'll get the same 36 again. Now what makes these two functions unconditional is that they uh, count every single cell in the range. They're, they don't skip over anything, they don't exclude anything, they count everything. There are times when we don't want to do that. Times uh, when we want to count only entries for Davis. For that we have what's called the count if function. Count if counts the number of cells within a range that meet a given condition. So let's see what the arguments are. Well, first is the range, and that's going to be person. And then the second argument is a criteria. What we want to give the function in order uh, that it can select and exclude cells for counting. So I'm going to put in the name of the person, Davis, like that, and hit enter. It found three and we can verify that by seeing the entries down here. Let's do a couple quick checks. I'm going to take the first cell up here which was Balak and I'm going to type in Davis and see if the number in the function goes up to 4. It does. I'm going to press Control Z to put that back to Balak and it's back down to 3. So the way this function works is it starts at the first cell of the range and it says is it Davis? No. Is it Davis? No. It just works its way blindly and stupidly down the column. Davis no, Davis no, Davis no gets down here says Davis yes count 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 Davis no Davis no even though the list happens to be sorted the function doesn't stop when it gets past Davis instead it blindly goes all the way to the end of the list and and uh, returns a three it works well because computers are, um, uh, are so darn fast so who cares right but the important thing is it's conditional it has the word if in it and it means we're going to give it a rule that it will use to decide which cells to count and which not. Now, we wanted to find something that exactly uh, matched Davis. If I type uh, a 1 in here in the middle, I'm going to get a count of 0 because there's no entries like that in the list. Um, if I type Davison like that, a different kind of name, I get a 0 because it has to be an exact match um, in order for it to work. Sometimes we don't want an exact match. Sometimes we want to count uh, greater than or less than. Um, and to do that, what we're going to have to do is put in some clue for Excel to decide how to count uh, greater than or less than. So uh, we're going to count the number of entries where the estimate is 16 hours. Um, this is also an equal. So count if uh, estimated hours, comma, 16. 
we found five entries. Uh, let's just double check it. One, two, three, four, five. In this class, in most cases, I'm not going to give you enormous sets of data. Uh, and uh, uh, you should always uh, try to double check. One good way of doing it is to take a cell that doesn't match right now because this is a zero. I'm going to type a 16 in there and the number went up to 6 so I think I'm working fine. You should always check what you're doing. Now we're going to do a comparison where we want the actual hours or, uh, greater than 14. Another count if. This time we'll say actual hours. Now, now I get into an issue. If I just type 14 in here, all it will do is give me a count of entries that exactly match 14. That's this cell. But I want to count uh, everything above it, uh, the 16s, the 25s, and so on. For that, I can't just type the number up here. Instead, I have to give it a rule to find. So I have to type a, a double quote greater than 14. So whenever I'm going to use a comparison other than equal, now I don't want just equal to 14, I want greater than uh, 14. I have to put it in quotes and then use what's called a relational operator here to tell it that I want numbers that are bigger than 14. Hit enter. Now I found that there's 15 cells in the table that have more than 14 hours of work on them, actual hours. Let's double check it. Let's take this 25 here and make it a zero and the number went down to 14. So I'll put that back with control Z. Um, and let's take a number that is above it, uh, or that's below it, and make it above it. Let's make this one 22, and the number went up to 16. So I'm feeling like that's working pretty well. Now let's do uh, a function that's a little more complicated. These have all been counts here. But now uh, I want to sum. So there is a sum if function, but I only want to count uh, or sum up total estimated hours for the person Dobson. If I type sum if here, sum if, left paren, first is the range that I'm going to um, uh, compare against. That's person. Then I'm looking for the criteria of Dobson. Now, what Excel will do is use the first two arguments I'm putting here to identify the rows it wants to sum. Now we have to tell it what column to sum from. And that's going to be estimated hours. So for the first time in one of these conditional functions, we've got three arguments to supply. Okay? How, uh, well, let's put it in and try it. Total estimated hours for Dobson is zero. Hmm, is that right? Well, um, yeah. They're all zero here. So let's check it. First thing I'm going to do is uh, type a, one, um, a 12 here, for example, and notice it went up. I'm sorry, I typed 15. I wonder why I got the 15. Let's put it back to zero. Okay. Uh, what happens if I give Dewhurst 15 hours? Didn't affect this because we're only scanning for Dobson. So how does this function work? Well, we said search the person column for a value of Dobson. When you find it, so it comes down here, oh, it found Dobson. Then it steps over to the estimated hours column and sums it up. Dobson, sum, Dobson, sum, not Dobson, not Dobson, and so on down the list. So we are using this to compare for the, find the name Dobson and then sum up in the estimated hours column. Let's do one more and I'll leave the others uh, 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 for you guys to try on your own and we can work through them in class. So I want average estimated hours when more than zero. I can't just use an average function over the estimated hours column. I can try type this but it won't work right. It's just going to take every single row and, and average it 8.7. But average estimated hours when more than zero has a, an important business use. The ones that have zeros on them simply haven't been estimated yet. The manager hasn't had the time to go look at it and estimate it. So when we average the estimated hours, we only really want to average the estimated hours where the manager has made an estimate. And those are the ones that are greater than zero. Okay, This one hasn't been estimated. That one has been. We want to leave the zeros out because that drags the average down. Right now, the average across the entire uh, column 
is uh, 8.7 hours. Let's remember what that number is. So let's change this into an average if. Okay, what range are we uh, using the criteria of? Well, it's estimated hours. Okay, our criteria is greater than zero. I have to put this in double quotes because it's I'm not comparing equal to zero. I'm comparing greater to zero. Now the average range is the range we're going to average across. It happens to be the same column, and I, it's an optional argument. This third argument right here, average range. But I'm going to supply it anyway because I want you guys to be explicit in what you're doing. So I'm going to scan the average, est uh, the estimated hours column for values greater than zero. And if a value is greater than zero, I'm going to put it in the estimate. Now look, it's 12 and a half hours. Without excluding the zeros was only 8.7. So this function gives you a better feel for what's going on in the column for the values that have actually been estimated. Try your hand at these and we'll look at them in class uh, or you can send me an email. Thanks.